Okay guys, so a little update on the car and what happened. I was at the track two weeks ago. You've now seen that video last week. It was, uh, it was awesome, but uh, what happened after the track day is what's kind of scary and it could happen to you. It's a thing. I've learned now that it is a thing. It's extremely uncommon uh, and it doesn't happen in pretty much most cases, but uh, it's possible. So we should kind of get into what happened and uh, how I almost pulled the motor thinking it was bad, <laughs> even though it's fine. So basically, I did my track day last weekend. Uh, the car was great. It was extremely fast. Charge pipe didn't come off, so <laughs> I guess the new piping kit works. Uh, but the car was, uh, it was an animal. It had a ton of power. The power band was great. The tires were working great. Uh, it was a good time. Um, my big downfall was my oil temps. I could only really get about one hot lap in as soon as I started the second hot lap. The gauge would just peg 280. Uh, the sensor maxes out at 280, so what the oil temp actually went to can't tell you i'm estimating over 300 easily um because once your oil temp reaches that 280 it's going to stay there for a bit you know seven liters of oil in the pan it's a lot of capacity so it takes a little bit of time to come up to temp but once you're at temp it will stay at temp uh, only because again more volume so uh yeah that oil definitely saw 300 plus and it was cooked heavily uh heavily that track day so i had low oil pressure leaving the track now typically as your oil temp comes up pressure goes down that's perfectly fine that's normal that's how engines work it's how oil pressure works it's how all this stuff works so low oil pressure at idle when your oil temp is 250 260 it's not a concern as long as it's above like zero you're fine <laughs> but uh the issue became when i started driving home uh and i thought you know by now the oil temp has come down it's below 200 it should be okay right no still had low pressure so i started the car up the next day took it out got some logs and then i said you know what i'm gonna change the oil uh oil breaks down at a certain temperature higher end oil will deal with more temperature but 300 plus uh that's too much way too much i use uh redline it is a good street track oil um it has a very high hths rating high temp high shear uh, which means it can handle a lot of abuse and a lot of bs uh great for high heat great for track days I've sent samples to Blackstone before and the oil held up great. Uh, this time though, because no oil cooler, <laughs> uh, it's like water. If I open that jug and, and stick my finger in, the oil just spills off. So it's like water. So I came home, thought, you know what? Let's uh, do a good old oil change on the car. So drained out all the oil. I let it drain forever, maybe for a half hour. I just, I went inside and just let it also. I wanted to get all of the, uh, you know, all of that old crappy oil out of the car. It was completely black and it was thin, like like water, like 020 maybe. I just, I've never seen it like that. Um, <clears throat> and so, I, you know, I drained the oil, uh, put a new filter on. I always take a look in the pan just to see. It was clean, no shavings, nothing scary. Uh, and I, I, after I do my oil changes, I like to, uh, I like to prime the car. So, put to the floor on the gas, Turn the key, let it crank a little bit, and I'll insert a clip here of what I saw. I purposely primed this thing just to see, you know, before I started it. Fucking nothing, nobody home. Start it. No oil pressure, that's fucking game over. So, what did I notice? Or what did I do after I saw that oil pressure wasn't coming up? Well, as you heard in the video, the car ran for about 40 seconds with no oil pressure. It sounded fine though. No knocking, no ugly noises. Turned the engine off right away. Started reaching out to some people who know more about this stuff than I do. And I pretty much got the same uh, answer. You know, pull the oil pan off, see if it's full of shavings. If it's not, inspect the, the pickup tube. Make sure it hasn't fallen off. Make sure the O-ring's still in there. You can see... Uh, car is kind of apart the oil pans on there with like two bolts right now but uh, i'll insert some pictures of what i found oil pan was clean bottom end was cleaner than when the engine was installed uh means the oil i use has good detergent package in it so that's cool but anyways oil was clean pan was clean everything was clean no shavings no sign of anything we even pulled a rod cap off i'll insert that clip uh and the rod bolts uh sorry the rod uh, caps and the rod bearings they're fine a little bit of use wear signs of use but nothing that catches a nail nothing that would lead to complete and total uh you know engine failure so uh pretty much once i found that everything inside the engine looked 
perfect. The next thing to do uh, was basically to pull the motor. At that point, I figured, you know what? The oil pump failed, something died. Uh, oil pump can't seize on this motor because it's chain driven. If your oil pump seizes, you need an engine because you're gonna throw your timing off, piston the valve, that's gonna be game over. So I know for sure the oil pump didn't seize. It's an OEM pump. It's a, it's a Ford pump, so it's the EcoBoost part number, but it's the same thing. Uh, some people say the EcoBoost's a little bit better of an oil pump. I don't know. It was making beautiful pressure prior to this. So post track day, we said low oil pressure because the oil's all killed and thinned out. Uh, after changing it, no oil pressure, well, there's only really two things that could cause that. You either wiped all your bearings out or the oil pump's just not picking up any oil. So I had my friend come by and thank God he did because without him, the engine would have been out right now and I would have been either parting the car out or <laughs> building another motor. Uh, but he came by and he got underneath the car and he got some of my Lucas oil. Lucas oil is like a very thick, heavy oil. Usually it's an additive that's added to help quiet motors down. I come from a neon background. We used it to quiet piston slap worked great uh it's good for assembling engines it's just it's like an assembly lube so my buddy came and he got underneath the car filled the whole entire oil pump up with lucas oil just squirted half of the bottle in there you know half a liter almost uh and then we cranked the car over with the oil filter off and that little drain pan there has probably about a liter and a half in it it was under the oil filter housing for i don't know maybe 15 seconds and oil was just pouring out of there put the filter back on Started the car, boom, 80 PSI cold start. No issues. <sighs> what had happened? My oil pump lost its prime. The oil pump itself holds oil internally. And if you let all of that drain out, which will happen to thin oil, maybe didn't do your oil changes on time. If the car's jacked up on a really crazy angle, that's not gonna help. Uh, and the oil pump lost its prime. So by filling it up with Lucas oil and turning, priming the engine over, we were able to return the prime to the pump and all is well. This, you know, at a regular shop, they might've told you you need an engine, your engine's toast. Looking at the bearings, the engine was fine. And that's really all it took for me to, to, to try and, and, and troubleshoot this further. Uh, I've got rod bearings that I'm gonna be doing tomorrow just as a precaution. Uh, it, the bearings were in good shape, but we're in there anyways. And we do know they ran a little bit maybe dry. So just to be safe, we're gonna redo the bearings. They're just standard size bearings. So I ordered standard size bearings. We'll plastic gauge them again, make sure that everything's within spec. And by Saturday evening, I should be back to, uh, back to boosting. But yeah, oil pump prime. Your pump can lose prime. It can happen. It's rare and it's not common at all, but it's a thing. So yeah, uh, glad I learned about that. Glad that the car's okay and the engine's okay. I thought that this was gonna be the end, but no, definitely not, not even close. So what we believe led to this issue was me killing that oil, thinning it out to basically water, and then draining the car for too long. And everything just drained out of the pump and wasn't able to create uh, a seal. It was sucking up air, so it wasn't able to create the prime, and, and that's it. That's That was all.